So let's uh, let's start with some of the institutional trends and how people are thinking about the space right now, given what we have seen last couple of years. Um, and uh, what are the things that we are seeing improving on the due diligence side? What are the things that the institutional investor is looking for? And how they are thinking about the space in general, given, given the uh, serious issues we faced last couple of years, in particularly with the due diligence. I'm happy to jump yeah. in here. Uh, so we touched on this a little bit yesterday, uh, where there there is a little bit of a fatigue right now for private funds. Um, uh, there was there was a discussion yesterday with the allocators where uh, people are you know waiting more emphasis on liquid strategies right now. I think that you can see that in crypto as well. Um, generally fatigue with the venture strategies. People are very, very concerned with longer lockup periods. Like the typical venture fund is 10 years plus two and then plus another two years. Uh, that is causing a lot of people in this high interest rate environment, a lot of pause when making commitments. Uh, one thing that people see is that you know the liquid markets are 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 doing fine, and you know we've we've experienced this over the last kind of three weeks a pop in the crypto uh, liquid space as well, and so people are very hesitant to um, to come forward and write uh, uh, checks to the venture market, and it takes a lot of long term thinking to be able to, um, to to really see the value proposition in that today. Yeah, you know, when when we talk to uh, you know our LPs and prospective LPs and allocators more broadly, we're we're hearing basically two things. One is which uh, in crypto specifically, there has been this idea in you know especially 2021 when the market was moving you know up and to the right and everybody just wanted exposure. That theoretically I can have you know five, six, seven managers just to get that exposure more broadly. And what we hear from a lot of our LPs is there's just it's not a big enough asset class today for us to have that exposure and for it to be differentiated and uncorrelated. And so we hear a lot of people say, listen, the stewards of capital in your space, there's probably not that many of them and we don't need that many uh, different positions or different managers. And so we still want to invest in the space. We still want exposure, but we're going to go from, you know, call it five managers down to two in the next round of funding. We're going to go and we're going to really focus on, you know, bigger checks uh, and, and just having like having a, a little bit more, being a little more thoughtful around who they actually want to back versus just getting exposure to the asset class more broadly. And the second thing that we hear is, and I think this is probably true, and you can probably talk about this, uh, about venture more broadly, is the allocators themselves also need liquidity, right? So a lot of them are sitting on a lot of different fund managers. They are, and haven't gotten a lot of uh, capital back to them over the last few years because of the way the markets have come down over, over that period of time. And they're sitting around and saying, I simply can't, my, my books are, are weighted too, broad, too, too highly to venture, and we can't simply put more money into venture until we still get, start getting some capital back from you know, any one of our managers. And they're waiting for that. And I think the market needs to pick up a little bit, and we need to start seeing exits for people to go you know, more, uh, more aggressively back into crypto uh, venture, more, more specifically. But the liquid markets, we definitely see a, a little bit of a different attitude as well. I'll take the the opposite side of what Rob and Robbie are talking about because I work on on the liquid side. We run a, a fund of hedge fund product. I could say for sure that going into 2020 to 2021, VC was where a lot of the action was at, where a lot of the interest was. Um, but that started to migrate mid 21. But the biggest issue that we had from a liquid perspective was obviously the events that happened with FTX scared away a lot of people. And so the lessons that we've learned since then. So let's say a year forward from uh, what happened last year in 22 to current day in 23 is that we have a lot of our investors, big institutional investors, such as allocators like pensions, endowments, sovereign wealth funds, all asking us not only to conduct the due diligence that you would also see on the VC side with the managers that, that we work with, but more importantly, uh, considering things such as counterparty risk, not just for our portfolio, but drilling down to each of the managers that we work with to ensure that, again, that they have the proper checks in place with regard to not only monitoring counterparties, but more importantly, being able to move around the liquidity spectrum based on the strategy that they have. And to be honest with you, it's not an easy feat. You know, there's only a few counterparties that are out there that can really execute on the various strategies on the liquid side, in particular, when you consider a strategy such as market neutral or quantitative strategies. 
Um, a lot of people like to hedge through um, various types of derivative instruments. And the issue that you have there, which is more a, a global issue, and I'm sure we'll talk about this later, is that if you're one of these crypto hedge fund managers trying to execute, again, one of these complex trades, you're almost forced to do it with an offshore counterparty, which again presents risk and scares away some institutional investors where, let's say here in the US, your US-based counterparties, Coinbase being the prime example, is not able to fully execute the strategy. So that's a balancing act that we have too, that again, to Rob and Robbie's point, people are interested in liquidity, but they're not able to really fulfill the, the requirements that they have uh, in and of themselves because they're afraid of having blowups like we've had over the past year. Yeah, maybe. And, and Luca, we sit more on the other side where we're, we're supporting funds. Typically, we do see information sometimes a bit earlier in industries and how the industry is reacting because it, it generates leads or, or sales for us. And we support about 30 fund administrators and, and several hundred um, spot crypto funds. Um, and we are it, it definitely dried up. I think everyone that everyone was saying at the beginning of the year um, is, is true. We are starting to see a, a little bit of movement there, right? Obviously, and, and I don't mean just because of the bump in the last week, but even before that, we were starting to see a little bit more capital, tr capital trickle down and then be deployed. And uh, But it was in smaller amounts. Uh, naturally, everybody's looking for a discount in the steel right now, um, whether it's VC or in liquid markets. And um, But we are seeing, uh, it looks like a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel for what it's worth. I'm hoping for it to last, but to give a, a little a, a bit of a positive remark to all that. Yeah, I think the um, just sentiment more, more broadly has gotten considerably better over the last, I don't know, two months or so, um, especially since the XRP ruling and since we've gotten more clarity around uh, Bitcoin ETFs. The institutional allocators, to your point, you know, all the big guys, the pensions, et cetera, um, definitely better conversations since then, since August or so.